Sabah everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about a device that has two displays. I'm not talking about a folding device, I'm talking about a display that's on the front and on the back. This is the Nubia Z20, the international model, and it should be releasing very soon. Um, back at CES 2019, I had the opportunity to see the Nubia X, I would probably say the predecessor of this device, and we finally have the latest and greatest from Nubia, the brand new Nubia Z20. Let's check it out. Now, this is not the Chinese variant. This is the global edition that's going to be released very soon. Uh, this has already basically been awarded the German Design Award of 2020. Uh, again, we have Nubia, and then we have, of course, Z20. Now, on the back, we have a few indicators here. Uh, we have basically the dual design screen dis uh, display here. As I mentioned, we have two displays, one on the front, one on the back, and there are different sizes, and I'll share with you guys exactly what they are. We are running the latest Snapdragon 855 Plus. This is no longer running the 845 that we saw with the Nubia X. We have a triple camera setup in the back, a wide, a standard, and a telephoto. Also have super night shot. We have a 48 megapixel uh, main camera with OIS. Uh, we have a three times optical zoom with 30 times digital zoom. So just another cool thing. Again, triple camera setup. Uh, we have basically a pressure sensitive gesture control that's on the side, similar to the one we've seen on Pixel devices. We have dual fingerprint sensors. And this is a very ingenious design. I'll explain to you again why this is very functional to have two of them. Uh, we have a 4,000 milliamp battery that's supported with a vast charger built in in the box, as well as an always on display because the displays that we have here are AMOLED displays. The model that I have will support LTE. It's an eight gigabyte, 128 gigs of internal storage. Uh, my understanding is that there'll be another variant that will support up to 100, 512 gigs of internal storage. So first thing we'll notice right there, we have a small little packet and a SIM removal tool. It looks like they include a case and some basically instruction manual and stuff like that. Uh, basic stuff that we get here. And of course we have the brand new Nubia Z20. Not the X, the Z20. And then the rest of the stuff that we have in the box essentially is uh, basically a power charger. Let's go ahead and look at it here. So we have a cable, a dongle, basically since we don't have a three and a half millimeter headphone jack on the phone, as well as the fast charger that comes directly in the box. As I mentioned to you guys, we do have an always on display. Uh, this is the front facing display. You can also see the battery percentage here. And I flip it over, it actually also has the same thing on the back facing display with the same battery percentage. A 5.1 inch display, 720p HD plus display AMOLED on the front, a 6.4 inch display that's a full HD. So that's a 1080p on the front, 720p on the back, which should enable us to have really good battery life, especially since we have a 4,000 milliamp battery. So the always on display works not only on the front facing display, but as well as on the back one. Uh, the fingerprint sensors that we have here work really nicely. If you use the fingerprint sensor, so when you're setting it up, you set up to say if you're right-handed or left-handed. If I'm using it as in right hand, meaning I press the fingerprint sensor on the right side, it will unlock whatever display is facing me. So if I lock the device, switch over to the back, unlock it using the fingerprint sensor here, it does the exact same experience and it turns it on here. The back facing display seems to have some kind of a film, so it's not exactly as bright as the front facing one, but it should be able to do a good enough job to basically use it for basically multitasking, reading text. I wouldn't necessarily use it to watch video, as again, this is the lower of the two resolutions on the display. This is 720, and the front one, let's go ahead and lock this one, is a 1080p panel. You see this floating button? This enables us to basically switch between the back and the front facing display easily by pressing one button. So I can press the button, switch over. If I pressed it, it would be nice. Switch over and then I can do the exact same thing, switch over. Uh, the camera application is intended to work with both displays. And I mean by that is we don't have a pop-up camera, we don't have a punch hole camera. So essentially your main cameras or best cameras are the best cameras you have on the device. Now the camera application has been optimized to work with both displays. Um, although the experience that you get between the two displays is a little bit different. So on the front facing display, you're using the back sensors. You have the three different sensors, the 48 megapixel sensor, 16 and the eight. Uh, we have the ability of going basically wide, standard focal length, three times, that's optical. Then we go 10, five, 10, and all the way up to 30. Uh, if we want to be able to basically go, uh, let's go ahead and go, we can go all the way up to 30 and that's digital zoom. Uh, video is possible to going all the way to 4K at 30 frame, uh, 60 frames per second as well as 8K at 15 frames per second if you want to be able to use that outdoors. Uh, but again, uh, this is just using it the front. When you switch it over to the front facing camera, let's go ahead and click that. You'll notice that the display turns off and you start using the back display. When you go into the video mode, for some reason, whenever we switch it over, although we're using the same sensors, um, I need to double check and see if it's a setting issue, but I'm only capped at 1080p on the front facing camera. I'm not sure why, but that's something to keep in mind, as well as that we don't have a way of using the other lenses. So let's go into photo. 
Here I basically have just standard as well as you know, white. Um, we don't have the ability of using the telephoto yet. So hopefully that gets fixed in the software update. Uh, but again, the software experience here is intended to give us like different options here, different modes, pro mode. Let's go ahead and switch over to the front. You can see right here, multiple exposures, slow mode, time lapse, and so on, all the different things that you'd like. Pro mode, photo mode, video mode, as I showed you guys. Uh, we also have a night mode, a dedicated night mode that's built in as well as portrait mode. And we're supposed to have really good nighttime photography with this. Um, the UI is very clean. It's very different than what we saw last time with the uh, basically Nubia X. It's actually almost, uh, I would say, like a very much pixel-like experience. The app drawer opens up. It's very simple. We don't have anything on the left, anything on the right. Uh, going into the settings, you can see basically pretty much standard colorization. It's all white at this point. Uh, we do have options specifically to customize the always on display. As I showed you guys, we have different options. I have right now the beta fish here and you can customize it. The secondary display space, you can customize how that actually turns on by either pressing the button or switching over and you can multitask and I'll show you what I mean. I mean right now you've seen here, I have the settings tab, right? I can switch over to the front and I can open up the Google Play Store. Very different, different experience. And of course I can switch over to the back again and I'm running things here. Um, you are able to basically use uh, the front facing display as well. Let's go ahead and switch over again. You're able to basically use the uh, multitasking on the front facing display and switch over to the other one. Although when you're using two apps on the front, it forces you to use two apps on the back. So just keep that in mind. Um, we have uh, super eye care here, secondary display, uh, pressure borders that enables us to basically do these kind of gestures. I can press it to bring in one handed mode um, or if I press it and keep basically a long press, I can press and hold and that's how we do screenshots right now. And you can change them and you can customize the long grip and the short grip and of course adjust pressure levels. Accessibility system, uh, the model number is the NX627J running Android Pie. So we are currently running the latest version of Android, uh, no word on Android Q or Android 10 for this device yet. Now the software that we're running on here, it says that its current version is 3.0. Now, even though this looks pretty much stock to Android, this is still running technically a skin over Android. So again, Android 9.0 would basically, uh, I'm not sure what the name of the UI is, but it's version 3.0 from Nubia. Other than that, you can customize it, install your personal uh, you know, launcher on it, all the stuff that you'd like to do. But overall, a dual SIM supporting. This model has eight gigs of RAM with 128 gigs of internal storage and capable of actually having another model that will support all the way up to 512 gigs of internal storage. Uh, battery level, again, it's a 4,000 milliamp battery. Haven't actually had to be able to use it that much longer. The display, you can go in there and customize, basically nightlight uh, preferences, brightness, font, uh, screen drawer, ambient display, and of course the device theme, you can turn it on. Now they do have some nice functional gestures that you can use. So let's say you open up the Google Play Store, but you wanna have this on the second display in a second. So you can go ahead and do three fingers to the right. It takes you back and it says already sent to Play Store. If I lock my device and I unlock it and go back to the back the display, you'll notice the Play Store is waiting for me. I can do the exact same thing, send it to the front facing display, and of course switch over to it. This is intended mostly for functionality purposes. So let's say I go in here and open up Chrome and I wanna be able to use Chrome, but I wanna use it on the secondary display. I can just do three finger swipe. Now that sits for me on the second display. I can do whatever the rest of the stuff I wanna do, go into the Play Store, do whatever I want. If I switch over, now that's waiting for me here. And of course I can go back here and do this. If I do another three finger swipe and I go back to the facing, back facing display, again, it works really nice. I can't stop playing with both displays. Uh, this is definitely very, very nice. Um, let's go ahead and do a quick audio test. So definitely a bottom firing speaker and not necessarily the loudest speaker that I've seen on the device, but definitely not bad. Um, as far as video, let's do a quick front facing and back facing video. So we're gonna start off with the back facing sensor. Again, this is technically the same sensor. It's a 48 megapixel sensor. Now, because the back finish on this device is actually very reflective, you can actually see yourself and hopefully use that to be able to better uh, basically uh, compose your images and your videos. Uh, the main thing, of course, is that the maximum resolution here is we are able to go all the way up to 8K, although it's 15 frames per second and not recommended to be used in video for, let's say, moving people. Uh, it's intended mostly for nature, as uh, in nature, obviously, things move very slowly, and you're able to get that resolution and even use it. I did a demo video for you guys on the Red Magic 3 using the same functionality, as this is pretty much a very similar thing. It's a beta. It's not intended to be used on a daily basis, but again, 4K, 60 frames per second on the back-facing sensor, or when we're using it in a back-facing mode. 
mode. Let's go ahead and switch over to the front facing mode. Uh, even though we're using the same sensor, there's a little bit of a difference there. When you switch over to the back facing mode or the selfie mode, I guess I would say, uh, the video is actually capped at 1080p. I'm not sure why we're using the same sensor and I'm not sure if this is basically done by design. We should be able to get 4K 60 frames per second on the front facing video mode or selfie mode, uh, mostly because we're using the same sensor. Again, hopefully we'll see something in the future that will unlock this feature. Uh, but other than that, this should be a good representation of audio and video on the brand new Z20. So one of the last things I want to share with you guys is you do have the ability of turning on auto mode, meaning every time you switch your device, if you notice I had the camera back there, I can actually switch it over and turn it on. So I can open up the Play Store here and I can open up here and go into Chrome. So we can switch between Chrome and the Play Store as many times as we <laughs> want. And it's really, really nice. So the main thing about this device is obviously the dual display. You have the front facing display and then of course you have the back facing display. I'm having to do this so that it initiates the front facing flip between the two. Uh, you can initiate that by either using the accelerometer or you can initiate that by using the fingerprint sensor. You can customize it or you can even have it entirely manual by pushing a button on it as I showed you at the beginning of the video. The overall thing that you want to keep in mind is that this is going to be coming out very soon. This is an international model so it's going to be supporting other bands other than the original Chinese market. And of course, this is definitely a much bigger upgrade than what we had originally with the Nubia X. This is again the 855 plus 12 gigs of well, 8 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of internal storage on specific models. Uh, we'll definitely do a much bigger dip dive for you guys on this device. I'm really excited to see what are some of the other things that we get with software updates to make the dual display more and more functional than what we have it now. We have gestures, we have the ability of accelerating, turning on things, multitasking with things. It's definitely very appreciated. Uh, like and subscribe as usual. Let me know in the comments below what would you like me to focus on with the Nubia Z20. This is TK. I'll see you guys in the next video.